So one of the biggest questions you get if you're doing self-protection and self-defense, the, the typical out of the box by a new person is, hey, just give me your three best moves. What are the three things I can remember and you know, do that's gonna get me results right away? And, and I understand, I understand why you would think that way and why you'd look at that. And so I'm gonna answer your question. I'm gonna give you three targets today on the human body, three specific areas to go. The first area we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the throat. Then we're gonna be looking at the solar plexus. And the third target is going to be the groin. Those are just the three that I decide to use today. Okay, and I'm going to put those together in a usable combination that you know I will pick basic strikes that anybody can achieve. So that's the idea. I want to give you something that's actionable, usable right now, and you can train with another person. Now, the way I want to make sure that I train this correctly is we're going to use the crawl, walk, run approach to things. So this is assuming a brand new, uh, a brand new training session. So I'm going to go really slow. I'm going to crawl during this time. Crawling does two things. It allows me to get accurate and correct, and it also allows my training partner to relax and give me really good models of injury because those are the two things that we're looking at. We got to understand what we're doing here. Okay. This allows me to use my body tools to go right into a vulnerable part of his body without him risking injury. And that's really critical, and we'll talk more about that later. But what I'm gonna have you do is, your first strike, you're gonna be using your forearm, okay? And I'm gonna be using two to three inches below the break of the wrist. That's gonna be my body tool that I'm gonna choose to use. Michael's just gonna stand here right now while I'm learning and give me reactions. So I'm gonna get close to him, because I wanna make sure that when I launch, if I was over here, that I wouldn't launch out here. I want to make sure that I get a full strike in him. And so I train myself to always start toe to toe. This tells me where my body would actually launch the strike. Okay? So I'm looking at the throat, coming in, touching, and getting my first reaction. Now, this is the minimum reaction I can expect when I slam my forearm into his throat. This is the profile Michael will give me at a minimum. Okay, now I'm looking at the solar plexus. The solar plexus is dead center in the torso, right here. This time, I'm going to use my elbow. My elbow will be the striking surface. I will step through with my elbow. So I'm coming in, and there's my elbow strike. Okay, and again, this is the profile I will see if the injury happens. This is what happens when you strike somebody to the solar plexus. Now, I'm looking right here. The groin is lined up perfectly. I have my shin back here. I'm going to do a shin kick into his groin. So I come in, prepare, and strike him to the groin. Now, for my last strike, I'm going to let you strike either the solar plexus or the groin again. From here, since my other foot's ready, I'm just going to go right in and shin kick the groin. Boom. Four strikes. So now this is your starting point. Okay? And all you have are those three moves I gave you, those three strikes. Based off of everything that I just showed you, you know, hey, you can probably execute those three strikes. It's real simple movement, so that's not a problem for you. But if this is where I'm starting, would you feel confident doing those strikes? Okay, Mike. Honest answer? No. You wouldn't. And that's the problem with the way most self-defense techniques are shown, a lot of uh, you know, self-protection information, reality self-defense. They just show you techniques. They show you quick things that you can memorize and then make you feel good because you do them over and over and over again. But it doesn't jive with real violence. What you need is the other 50%, and that's what we provide you with target-focused training. You need to understand what's happening in the human body so you have the confidence to do this in a situation like this where you have a knife. So let, I'm going to take you through slowly what actually happens to the human body in this situation. So Michael comes up on the knife. Now, I see that throat at that point. I can't focus on this right now. I can't undo this. This happened to me already. But I do know the physical dynamics of this. If I step in and strike the throat, he cannot penetrate with the knife. Now, he may cut me a little bit, but I'll take that. This is my life that's on the line. What's happened here is I've crushed all the cartilage in his throat. If I've done this successfully, I've crushed the cartilage in his throat, he's starting to asphyxiate. Three to five minutes, the brain starts to shut down. That's without any medical attention. But we're not stopping there. We then 
looked and we said, hey, listen, we're going to take advantage of the solar plexus. So I stepped in and I struck the solar plexus. And when we do that, that seizes the lungs, basically. So we've sealed the airway and now we've hit the, this bundle of nerves that's in the uh, solar plexus region. And now the lungs have been seized at that point. So it's, we've already cut off his airway and now we've created a situation where he can't bear down. He can't create any pressure in himself. Uh, the whole cavity in here is starting to shut down. His ability to breathe is, is creating chaos. Then the third strike we looked at from here was I did a shin kick to the groin. It came right up. Shin kick to the groin goes right into the pelvic diaphragm. Yes, with males we have, we have the, the testicles that get crushed, but really what we're doing is we're hitting the pelvic diaphragm hard, which again, his ability to stand, his ability to bear down all goes away. And if he can't bear down, he can't create a good strike. So now we've got his breathing shutting down. We've got his, um, his whole uh, ability to control his musculature compromised. And we've created chaos in his body. And then I told you an interesting thing at this point. I said, hey, from this position, you can strike either the solar plexus or the groin again. Now, why did I do that? Oftentimes when I've done this presentation before, People, and I'm assuming some of you out in the audience are thinking, well, the reason you told me to go to the groin again or solar plexus is proximity. He's close. It's easy for me to do those strikes again. Um, sometimes people say it's because, you know, to make sure that I got it. I get all of those types of responses. But your life's on the line. Is that good enough for you to bet your life on? Those types of answers. They're not. The reason I had you do that, Mike, could you just come over here? So from this position, if I strike the groin again or hit the solar plexus for the second time, either one of these areas of the human body, there's a physiological response that happens. Most people don't know what that physiological response is, but it is to vomit. You create somebody and you cause them to vomit. So let's understand what we've done. First, we crushed the airway. Second, we froze his ability to bear down. We then hit the pelvic diaphragm, which former, you know, takes away his stability at that point. And then I had you strike one of these areas again, and we created a vomiting situation. So, in the short amount of time that I've just shown you your first sequence, this is a guaranteed lethal strike. It's a kill set. Why? We've sealed his airway. There's no place for the, for the vomit to go. We created a vacuum within his lungs because of the strike to the solar plexus. And as the vomit goes out, it fills the lungs. The person goes into flexion and they die. Now, if I had just left it as, you know, hit the throat, strike the solar plexus, kick the groin, you'd be like, yeah, it's really cool. It's really aggressive. That's cool. I'll do it. And you do it with your friend back and forth. Having no understanding of if you're successful, what the physiological response is. And that's the whole key to target focus training. You need that knowledge. You need the knowledge for two reasons. One, you need to understand how to save your life and how to make sure you get real injury to the human body. And two, you need that knowledge so that you don't do something that's not justified. And unfortunately, there's a lot of aggressive stuff shown out there in the self-defense and reality self-defense world that has no explanation to you, the consumer, of what's really going on in the human body if you're successful. So I understand why you asked the question. But I would challenge you to go beyond that because it's not hard to get all the information and to really educate yourself so you're not worried about just memorizing three things, but you understand the principles of violence and you understand how to use those and how to save your life using those. Thanks for your time.